JB here, JB here. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. November 22nd, 320 on this fine Friday, 2024. Really quick talk about the market. Some names I'm looking at go from there. I'm going to take a look at the S&P in the green. It's been kind of hanging on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say by a thread, but uh, it's been chopping around, right? So about uh, up 18 tenths of a percent right now. Hit a high of 596 earlier. And it's been it's an extremely tight range. So the low today was 593.15 and the high is 596.15. So you take that three, divide it by 60, and was that uh, two tenths of a percent range? I let's see what I can I can probably I can probably do the math right now. Uh oh no, it's half percent range. What am I my math is bad. So well a little less than that. So pretty again, pretty um I think that's a pretty good sign considering where we are at. We're right near all time highs, all the possible, you know, headwinds that were geopolitical, all the, all the things that are going on in the market's kind of like just consolidating for the next leg. That's kind of what it looks like to me, pending anything crazy. Uh, I think once we get over that 600 hurdle, quick move to 610, then I'll start being uh, cautious and possibly looking for some hedge positions. Well, not, a, you know, a hedge position or two if things start to reverse. Uh, but I, we always have the Santa Claus rally. You have the, so, so we have that into December. And then you also have, uh, well, we have the Fed meeting middle of December. So it's, it's going to be interesting in December. But I, it, I mean, it's setting up pretty much, you know, I would think into the end. I mean, people, there's going to be repositioning at the end of the year. So we'll see how that all plays out. But for now, a solid session today. Uh, would have liked to see a break over 595 and hope we're right there at 594, 96, uh, 71 on the SPY. So good sign there. Uh, and then the small caps. Small caps are up over four four percent this week, recouping most of last week's losses. Uh, up another one point five percent today. Uh, just my favorite. That makes me so happy when I see the small caps going. Uh, and then the yields. And the yields are up just a little bit, but just hoping those start to head back lower. Uh, and the VIX is down nearly seven percent. So now, quick individual names. I posted this chart earlier, but just some monster moves. I mean, take a look at the move, obviously in, in Lemonade, which I've been talking about. For the last couple of weeks, actually just broke back under 50. Come on, get back up. Uh, then you have a second up there, Unity. That That's up 36%. Uh, and then some of the other names. Joby's up 24%. Um, uh, Peloton's up nearly 23%. And there's some other names out there. Square's up only 10%. Uh, and then you go to look at some of the crypto names. Some of them were up a heck of a lot Monday and Tuesday. I've given some of the games back. So just, just a month's week, some of them. Hope we get uh, some repeats or at least some... They hold their gains into next week and work on them, but uh, it's been a nice week for those. So really quick, some individual names, and uh, you know, I added more TDOC calls this morning. Um, it's up here about 3.7%. It was up near 11, a little after two o'clock. I, I really like the story. You look at the chart and I have the before and after chart. So I posted this chart in the watch list this morning and with this channel. So consolidation channel, and then it just looks like it was ready to break out. Well, it started breaking out yesterday. And then you looked at, this is the after. Let's see if I can get it on here. And this is the after chart of the move today. Just, I mean, a good sign here. So uh, right up to the, the the issue here is the 200-day moving average is right there at 11.05. So I want to see that break. And then once that breaks, I think it's off to the races. I haven't really looked as much over their fundamentals as I probably uh, would normally on, on a stock that has like a growth stock, right? This is not a growth stock. This is like a turnaround story. And one of the big metrics that I posted this this morning, I think I put on fin to it too, is their, the return to growth, right? So... The start typically have a turnaround, and if you a great example, and obviously it's probably not the best apples for apples example. You look at IBM, and IBM for years it languished, kept getting it would have uh, it would beat on EPS because they bought back stock, but their revenues would decline. People looking at their business say, "Well, this is a, this is a buyback business. This is not a growth business." The business declining. That so at some point, you know, investors get frustrated when growth is declining. At least be flat, right? So uh, finally, once IBM turned the corner. Uh, it took a couple of quarters for for the market to react, and then it was all back off to the races. Not saying the same here with Teladoc, but if it's just the signs that here is the bottom, and they just put out their guy, they put out their guidance October thirtieth earnings for their revenue, and they're pretty much saying flat to possibly positive. Is there any upside surprise? Obviously, the stock will really take off, but just think it's an interesting story. Not you know, it's not it's not a sexy story. It's not like this crazy growth story, undiscovered gem, or any of that. It to me, it's just an opportunity where I where I think. People have mispriced this way to the downside, and it's it's going to rally at some point. It already started to, so we'll see if we get some continuation to next week. But added some December strikes on top of my Januarys, which gives me kind of uh, allows me to be patient as opposed to have weekly strikes or uh, things like that. So that's that's Teladoc, uh, Lemonade. It's 
it was just flat as a pancake when I started doing this. And now it's down about 1%. Again, similar to the market, pretty remarkable. The stock's up over 50% year uh, for the week. And it's like the shorts tried to tried to push it down this morning at the open. And then it they couldn't. And then it just all of a sudden it's back to green, right? So I think that's a great sign. Uh, you know, I... I locked most of my position in already, so I'm not holding too much in regards to contract side, but the volume, you know, the <laughs> they've went up so much uh, in regards to percent wise that they're big positions. I'll just continue to hold those into next week. A uh, couple of November 29s, then I have those December 35s. Well, no, no, November 29th, uh, 45 strikes, and then I have the uh, rest of those December 35s. Uh, also, I, I forgot to mention, I mean, you probably know this, but three and a half sessions next week. My favorite day or one of my favorite, my probably one of the two favorite days of the trading trading year for me is the half days. So, <laughs> I, don't, I forget if we get one this uh, this holiday for Christmas, but we get one for Thanksgiving every year. So I know that. So Friday is my favorite day. All right, so that's Lemonade. Uh, Joby, another solid session. I, I put, I don't know where my levels are. I think I posted that on FinTwit in the chat room earlier, but broke over that 650. I put that last week. And then it just continues to go strong, uh, sh sh strong move today. Tested 729 right in the morning. Found some buy some sellers and then reverse course. It's been trading over 715, 714 ever since. Great sign. I think this trades up near 10 in into the end of the year. So uh, I'll I'll just be patient. I'll wait till next week. Um, again, you know I talked about this morning the huge call volume on those April strikes, April 25, 2025 strikes that brought in tons of premium, and then they hit the open interest today. So uh, someone, someone added them. I think that's a, that bodes well for for forward you know, going forward. A uh, Peloton almost looked like it was going to break ten bucks today. Finally, uh, you know, upper Bollinger Bands right up there at uh, nine fifty one. So I, I don't know if that's providing some some resistance. I might need a day or two of consolidation. But a really nice move. My my January strikes are solidly green. Finally, and I'll just be patient here. I don't want to I don't want to panic rush into. Uh, adding more strikes here, but if you take a look at the chart, it's like third time, third time is a, the charm, like the triple top breakout where it, it tested the highs back at the start of November, tested in the middle of November, and then finally yesterday broke broke that, and it, it looks like that's the final resistance, and they'll be off to race as sellers are gone. Uh, Square, all the way up to 94 at 2 o'clock, and it's giving back some of those gains, 92.80 right now. Uh, the unfortunate thing, the premiums, my calls are are, are red at not when the stock's 94 bucks. So they're still green from when I entered. I already locked uh, some in for 100%. So I'll, I'll just hold those. Uh, December's a different story too. Those are in the red. I, I'll just continue to hold into, into next week. I think it's a great under the radar story. I, I don't think the action, especially what happened yesterday with all the other uh, crypto names, you see Square was kind of, was pretty resilient. So I think it it's like almost a foregone conclusion. It's getting to 100. It's just, it might be a little choppy on the way to that uh, outcome. I'm trying to think of some of the other names. Today, obviously, uh, Unity. Do I have the Unity chart on here? I keep looking for other strikes on Unity, but uh, I'll just hold for now as well. I mean, that one, just a monster run. Uh, locked some in yesterday for close to 100%, and the calls uh, were over 100% early, and I was looking. I'm like, do I, I either, should I lock more of the 30s in and then and then go out and get, you know, do I get more more Januarys or I get, they have a 38 strike? They don't have dollar increments on the January strikes for, for you. So I, I'll just hold 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 my calls for now. They're they're up over well right at 100. Uh, percent But a great story too. And you look at the chart, and I talk about the 200-day moving average on on Unity. It hasn't traded over its 200-day moving average like this since uh, the end of last year. And uh, you know I think it, that one's been overpriced way to the downside. You know to the way to the wrong side. So I think there's opportunity for that one for upside. Uh, uh, Travel Zoo. I, I'm it's hitting. Multi-year highs here. It's almost at twenty bucks here. I, I have too much stuff on right now, and I, I, not that I'm concerned that we're going to have some kind of sell-off, but if we do, I don't want to be, I don't want to get, uh, I want to have a bad day. You know, like when when all your 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 tons of calls are all up, nice. You had a great week, and then you you get aggressive, and then Monday comes, and the futures are down one percent because of some geopolitical event or what have you, and then it becomes a, a horrible day, right? And then you get back some some of the or a lot of the gains you had the previous week. I'm not saying travels you would fall. I really like that name. It's just it's not the, it's not the quickest mover, not the most liquid options. So uh, because of that, if we do sell off on Monday or Tuesday, it might overreact. So I. 
I'm going to try and scale out of more positions before I look and look and add there. I was hoping to get out of Nettie's calls today. It was trading up near 88 into change. It was almost 89 yesterday. It was hanging there all day until the noon, noon hour. And then it's just been fading ever since. China market's been tough. Who knows when that, that they ever get out of their rut. Uh, I'm sure at some point, sometime they will. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other news. I think that's it for now. Um, at some point, usually it's when I start looking for my stocks, for my top five stocks for 20, uh, no, for next year, 2025. I mean, if you, the big winner for this year is STRL. I think that's up nearly 150, 200%. Where is it right now? It's 196 bucks. What I, I think end of last year when I did start, did my webinar, I think it was like an $85 stock, somewhere in there, 80 bucks, 78, I don't know. Uh, Agilisys is the other one. That one's up nice. Uh, that's at 136 bucks. I think that was 80 bucks when I did my top five stock webinar. Um, and um, Meritage Homes, I got to check where that was. I think that's somewhat flat. Uh, uh, GPCR is a rough one. <laughs> I mean, that was looking good at times. And just, hey, you never know. It's up 12% today and there could be buyback, you know, buyouts at some point before the year's out. And GPCR is one of them. But that one's uh, taking it on the chin, unfortunately. But uh, decent, if you average them all together, the... Um, the gains are like 30, 30 something percent. Anyway, that's it, folks. Have a great week. I'll be back on audio rock and roll.